Restoring Illinois to greatness. This is Illinois Rising, presented by the Illinois Opportunity Project and hosted by AM560's Dan Proft. Dan Proft back with Pat Hughes on this edition of Rising. And Pat, uh, sort of a bombshell in Springfield this week. Uh, The national becomes localized, and that is uh, this open letter that was uh, put out by a couple of... uh, lobbyist political types in Springfield outlining allegations of a culture of sexual harassment in the state capitol among the political class. Uh, imagine that. Uh, Springfield's a den of iniquity. Who knew? Only anyone who's ever spent any time right, down there. Right. That's, that's the only people who knew. Uh, but it, some of the uh, specific allegations were uh, fairly um, salacious. Here's one example. I'm quoting. It looks like a male legislator a chamber leader asking Mm. a female staffer out to dinner under the guise of offering mentorship, then proceeding to explain his open marriage to her and ask her if she's single. It looks like talking about the culture of sex harassment. It looks like a committee chairman with the power to kill her bill, telling a female staffer nice ass as she walks through the hotel hallway, fresh from her morning workout, the forced intimacy of staying in the same hotels, leaving little room for privacy or refuge. It looks like the candidate who slices his hands across the body of his fundraising consulting during call time, who calls and texts her in the middle of the night and refuses to pay her what she is owed because his advances are rebuked. And so this, of course, drew the customary moral indignation from all of the preening Pauls, the legislative leaders and candidates for governor and, uh, you know, everybody under the sun trying to get out front of this, at least until they're outed. Yeah, I, you know. I, I'm so mixed on this, Dan. So in one respect, it's it's terrific that women are speaking out. And there obviously is this type of thing that goes on in various workplaces, obviously Harvey Weinstein. And and, and, and it does and you go have, on. And you have two daughters. I have two daughters. So so and a and a wife who's a who's a partner in a law firm. So right. so on one hand, I'm so grateful that people are speaking out. On the other hand, uh, the way they're doing it is very interesting to me. So, for example, I think there's a lot of how can we get this away from Harvey Weinstein and the Democrats and Hillary Clinton and Bill Clinton and Matt Damon and all these sort of leftists. How can we now spread it across everybody so it's all just men? And then this, to me, is a little bit of opportunism because did this just happen? Where was this statement five years ago, ten years ago, right? It pops up now. And, and, and it's all about courage. But there's no names named. Look, if somebody is, if there's a legislative leader who's doing this type of stuff, why is his name not being called out so he can no longer be the legislative leader so other young women are not put in the same predicaments going forward? Yeah, so there's, plus, a little bit of, there's a little bit of, I'm, I'm mixed. Yeah, well, plus I'd, I'd, I'd love to ask that uh, legislative leader who uh, was referred to uh, and um, the allegation about what he said, I'd like to ask his wife if she also believes they have an open marriage. Yeah, I wonder if that's a two-way street. <laughs> that may be interesting. Um, so, so, I mean, the timing, of course, it's a little bit, I, I get what you're saying, it's a little bit of like everybody feels the need to pile on and share their story. And that's okay where there are legitimate problems and sometimes you need you know, somebody to go first before other people will go second and third and down the, down the line. Um, anybody who's uh, been around Illinois politics for uh, any particular spell of time like I have knows uh, that Springfield you have a bunch of you know would-be Caligula's running around and it's been like that for a long time um, that's because the, the type of person that has been historically attracted to be a legislator to leave their family to go down there that type of person is the type of person historically not the people we train and recruit that 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 kind of circumstance and environment appeals to them well yeah i mean just uh, and they're weak a segment of them that's what i mean i'm not saying all of them a segment of them the the ones we're talking about yeah a segment of them right and this is why they call it spring vegas right the idea that you go down there and you whatever you do is just left in springfield and then you go back to your home um and uh you know if there, there, there are things that are consensual that are nonetheless immoral you know maybe those stay quiet but uh, if you have people that are uh, you know, basically acting in a predatory fashion towards their colleagues or towards staff, uh, then they absolutely should be called out. And hopefully, you know, I don't want to kind of tell 
women who have legitimate grievances what they should do. But hopefully you would think that at some point there's enough critical mass that uh, repeat offenders of a very serious nature are identified so they can be, you know, frankly, uh, excised from the caucuses, from elective office, because we shouldn't have people like that in elective office any more than we should have people like that in charge of schools or as priests or in any other position of authority and power.